You're going to buy your first car. That's exciting. Whether you can afford to buy a new car or choose to buy a used one, this will probably be the largest purchase you've ever made. So you've got to take your time and do your homework, or you could wind up paying way too much for your new set of wheels. Stick around. We'll set you straight. I'm Herb Weisbaum, and this is The Consumer Man Show on LifeSmarts.org. The Consumer Man Show is brought to you by the good folks at Credit.com. Credit.com, a place to comparison shop for credit cards and get your credit score absolutely free every 30 days, plus expert advice on a variety of financial topics. Now, here's America's consumer expert and the national quiz master for life smarts, the consumer man, Herb Weissbaum. Buying a car is a game that pits you against the dealership. That friendly salesperson wants to get you to pay as much as possible. It's your job to negotiate the best deal you can. You've never done this before. They do it every day. Jack Gillis is an expert on car shopping. In fact, he wrote the book on this subject, The Car Book 2014. Let me start with this question. What are the biggest mistakes people make when they go to buy a car? Well, there's two big mistakes. First and foremost is falling in love with a vehicle that's just not right for you and then thinking that if you can make the monthly payment, the deal's a good deal. A lot of people go into a dealership and tell the salesperson, here's how much I can afford to pay each month. Why is that the wrong way to handle this? It's a huge mistake because you're really making three transactions. You're buying a car, many of us are trading in a car, and you're arranging financing. If you just look at that monthly payment, you have no idea what you're being charged for the car. You don't know what you're getting for your used car, and you have no idea what your monthly interest rate is, all of which could be overpriced across the board, but disguised in a artificially low monthly payment. Okay, so if these are three separate transactions, walk us through how we approach it. Sure. The first is making sure you get just the right car for yourself, and there's a two-step process there. Take a good long test drive in the various cars you're interested in, and then start negotiating for the price of that car, starting from the invoice price. The second is most of us will be buying the car with financing, so check with your credit union and your bank prior to going to that dealership so you can determine whether the dealer's financing is better or worse. And then finally, if you are trading in a used car, be sure you know the value of that used car so you get a fair deal from the dealership. We hear a lot about invoice price. How do we factor that into what we think we should be paying for a vehicle? The good news about invoice pricing is that it's somewhat available and you can find it on the internet and some car dealers even publish it. Keep in mind that that's not exactly what the dealer has paid for that car because of all kinds of backroom deals between the dealer and the manufacturer. However, if you can get a car close to invoice price, then you've done a good job in negotiating for that vehicle. And that's something very important to remember. If the deal isn't going the way you want it to go, just pick up and walk out the door. There are plenty of dealerships around. That's absolutely correct. You have the most important tool in negotiation, and that's what I call the 180-degree turn. If you are not being treated with respect, if you're not getting the information you want, or you're not getting the price you want, just turn and walk. Because remember, the dealer needs you more than you need that dealer. So a key point here is you need to shop for money, that car loan, just like you would for the car. Absolutely. You need to shop around for not only money for the car loan, check with your credit union and your bank, but also shop around for insurance. Insurance is one of the biggest costs of car ownership, and for young people, insurance can be very expensive. So get at least three estimates from three different insurance companies for the car that you're interested in. Now, a lot of kids may not be able to afford a new vehicle for their first vehicle. There are a lot of benefits to having a used car, especially if you get a good one. That's absolutely correct. And first and foremost, buying a used car today is not buying somebody else's problems. There are plenty of great used cars on the market due to lease turn-ins, rental car company turn-ins and so forth. So buying a used car can save you about 50% in overall ownership and operating costs, primarily because the first owner has absorbed the most expensive cost of car ownership, and that's that first year of depreciation. Now, because the used car market is so competitive these days, most car dealerships and even some big used car stores offer vehicles that are pre-inspected. What should we know about that? Now, this isn't a guarantee that the car is going to be perfect, but it is a much greater step forward than the old-fashioned used car lots. So what should you do to make sure you are getting a good used vehicle? Make sure the vehicle comes with some kind of warranty, either the rest of the new car warranty that hasn't expired or in a warranty from the seller. The second is 
have it inspected by an independent mechanic. Not someone that was recommended to you by the seller, but someone who you know and trust. Even if it costs you $50 to have it done, it's a great investment to ensure that that car is not a lemon. Because that mechanic might find out that the car was in a wreck that you didn't know about and you should walk away and find another vehicle. Well, there's all kinds of things that could happen. One, he could find out that it was in a wreck. Two, he could find out that there may be some wear and tear problems, such as it needs new tires or it needs new brakes. Now, this may not mean that you shouldn't buy the car, but it does mean you could go back to the seller and say, I'd like to buy this car, but it needs all new tires. I'm going to give you $1,000 less. Jack, if there's one tip you want to leave the kids with, what would it be? Make sure you purchase a car that you are very comfortable driving. Take a good long test drive. Make sure you have great visibility. Seat belts are easy to use. Always wearing those seat belts is critically important. Fast fact, the average new car costs about $32,000 these days. That's more than some people make in a year. The average cost of a used car is a lot less, around $15,000. The largest cost factor for owning a new car is what's called depreciation, the value that a new car loses as soon as you drive it off the lot. When you go car shopping, whether for new or used, take someone with you, someone who can keep track of the negotiations and let you know that something just isn't right and it's time to leave. Remember, once you sign the contract to buy that vehicle, it's yours. With a car purchase, there is no three-day cooling off period. So make sure, absolutely sure, you found the right vehicle and negotiated a good price, one that you can afford before you close the deal. Well, that's this edition of the Consumer Man Show. Thank you for listening. I hope you'll share this with your friends. You can find me, Herb Weissbaum, online 24-7 at my website, consumerman.com. And don't forget to join the competition and use the free study resources at lifesmarts.org. The Consumer Man Show is brought to you by the good folks at credit.com, a place to comparison shop for credit cards and get your credit score absolutely free every 30 days, plus expert advice on a variety of financial topics. This is LifeSmarts.org. LifeSmarts.org, a service of the National Consumers League. LifeSmarts. Learn it. Live it.